didn't think much of it. I didn't say anything and just gave an uncomfortable then laugh. Please help I wanted me to start to the game the already. To the so room. I nodded and said, Today we'll see about we'll have that. Let's start. And watch I started movie. bouncing the ball on the ground and started yes, dribbling my way to I score. Dribble and then double dribble as Jamal was trying to snatch the ball from me. I brought Jeez. the ball up and jumped and shot the ball Mom towards the hoop. It went air ball. Beer? I couldn't believe What's I missed it. Flavor? From that point, I started messing up the game. It has a then Jamal took the ball and started taste. dribbling. I tried to snatch the ball, but apparently cool he had drink. learned some new techniques, You'll so I couldn't. Able to drink he threw the ball in the air towards the hoop. 18. The ball flew and went Peter, right inside the hoop, I and he scored. Jamal was scoring basket beer. after basket. I had never seen him so focused and motivated to win. Meanwhile, I lost all focus and energy and scored just a few Mom, baskets. Can you we came to the end of the game. I had to face sauce? the fact that I had terribly I lost to Jamal. I was embarrassed and tired, it's so I sat on the ground. Then, I saw Jamal running oh, towards sorry, me with a smirk son. on his face. Woohoo, what Five a seconds. game, he said in a rather loud tone. Here you yeah, are, Tom. I said, trying not Enjoy. to sound irritated. I hope you haven't forgotten the one who wins the game wins the girl, he said. I had completely forgotten about that. It was such a ridiculous bet that I hadn't even given it a second thought. I thought that was a joke, I also said. Nope, I was pretty serious, but it's not a big deal. I meant for just a friendly date. Now, take out your phone and tell her about this, he said. I was already embarrassed about losing the game. I didn't want Jamal to think I was insecure, so I did what he said. I took out my phone and texted Everyone my girlfriend. Jamal wants to take you for a coffee as friends. Call him. Yes, After thanks, that, Mom. I returned home with so defeat written all over my face. I felt grapes. even more tired, so I checked my temperature. Hang in I there, Tom. <laughs> I heated some chicken soup in the kitchen, ate a bowl of it, and headed to my bedroom to sleep the fever off. The next morning, I woke up feeling much better. Thanks for watching. I checked my phone for texts Don't forget without to getting like, out of bed. Share, there was one text from my girlfriend. Comment on my video. It read, Please, Hi babe, I will visit you in the to evening. Learn I'm going out for lunch Jessica with Jamal. Channel. Although I was feeling better health-wise, that text instantly Goodbye. ruined my mood. I got up, went down to the living room, and decided to spend the day watching Netflix on the couch. Later in the evening, my girlfriend finally arrived home. I was still on the couch watching a series on the TV. She joined me on the couch and kissed me on my cheek. I didn't respond. She gave a disappointed sigh. Are you mad at me? She asked. I didn't say a word, but I was actually very mad. I thought she would understand that from the silent treatment. Look, you can't be mad at me. You put me up to this, she said. Then she got up, grabbed her bag, and left. After some time, I cooled off and realized that whatever my girlfriend said was not wrong. I sent her an I'm sorry text, put my phone on the charger, and then went to sleep. I went to her house to see her the next morning. On my way there, I thought I should get her some flowers, so I stopped at the florist. The vendor was an old lady. She asked me what kind of flowers I would like. There were so many of them, so I got confused. Just give me some roses, I said. She handed me the bouquet of roses. I got her the money, thanked her, and headed towards my girlfriend's house. I went inside and hugged her and gave her the roses. We kissed and made up. She explained to me how her lunch with Jamal was only friendly. They were only besties and nothing more. After that, she sat me in the living room and went to take a shower. I was sitting there when I heard a phone ring. It was not mine. It was my girlfriend's. She left her phone in the room. I waited a while to see if she would come back to check, but she didn't, so I went on to check. I grabbed her phone and saw on the screen of her phone that it was a text from Jamal. I didn't know the unlock code of her phone, so I couldn't see what it said. After all that she had just explained to me, I didn't want to doubt anything. I was getting restless to know what the text said, but I didn't want to ruin my relationship with my girlfriend, so I ignored it. The next few days, I noticed that she was on her phone all the time. Even when she was with me, she was always texting on her phone. When I asked her what she was doing on her phone, she would always make some excuse or tell me it's nothing. But I couldn't ignore it anymore. I knew something was up. I knew something was going on between my girlfriend and Jamal. I wanted to confront Jamal, but he wouldn't return any of my texts and he hadn't shown up for our one-on-one -on -one game for almost a week now. I had to get some answers, so I decided to meet up with Jamal's girlfriend to ask her if she was aware of the situation. We met at a cafe. We got some coffee and sat down to talk. I told her about Jamal and my girlfriend. I was lost for words by what she said next. Jamal and I broke up about a month ago, she said. We finished our coffee. I thanked her and we went our separate ways. I was shocked and furious. Was it his intention to date my girlfriend all along, I thought? Since my girlfriend was also keeping secrets from me and my best friend turned out to be a snake, I decided to end my relationship with both of them. However, I had to gather enough evidence against them or catch them red-handed because I didn't want to be the bad guy. Once, I followed my girlfriend to the park. 
I walked behind her, keeping just enough distance so that she wouldn't see me. She was headed towards the park. Jamal was already there waiting for her at the entrance. She reached there and hugged him. They went on inside and got seated on a bench. Meanwhile, I had to find a spot from where I could spy on them without being seen. I saw some bushes just across from where they were seated, so I went on to hide behind those. I could clearly see them from there but couldn't hear what they were saying. Their gestures were normal and friendly. As I was observing, a bug came flying around me from the bush. I threw my hands in the air to chase it away. Damn you bug, get out of my face! I got distracted for a moment, then I looked back at the bench and saw that it was empty. They were gone. So I got out of the bush to see if I could spot them, but they were gone for good. I am not going to find out the truth like this, I thought. I had to up my game. I went to the store to get all the essentials. I bought a camera to record their actions, a GPS tracker to figure out where they were at, and all black clothes so they wouldn't see or notice me. I also had to get something to get the GPS tracker to them, so I decided to buy my girlfriend a fancy bag and gift it to her with the GPS tracker on it. I called my girlfriend to my house. I told her I had a surprise for her. She came over and I gave her the box with the bag. She opened the box and found a fancy bag inside it. When she saw the bag, her eyes lit up. She got so happy that she jumped and hugged me. I had wanted to have this bag for so long. Thanks, baby, she said. Anything for you, I replied. Inside, I was satisfied thinking that I was one step closer to figuring out the truth. I asked her to watch a movie with me, but she said that she had something important to do with her mom and left. I knew that she was lying to my face. I put on my detective gear and got ready to follow her. The GPS tracker was connected to my mobile phone, so it was very easy for me to know her location. I was waiting for her to go a little further so that I could follow her without being seen. But she didn't. There was no further movements in her location, and it got stuck in one place. Wait, I know where she's at, I thought. I ran out of the house towards her location. It was Jamal's house. She was in Jamal's house. I was angry, but I couldn't let my anger get in the way of my mission. I could see movements in his living room from through the front window. I crouched and slowly approached the window so that I could see exactly what was going on in there. When I reached close enough, I tiptoed and peeked inside. They were kissing. I had seen this coming, but I still was heartbroken. I got over my emotions and quickly took a few photos. I couldn't stay there anymore, so I walked off without making a sound. The next day, I invited both my girlfriend and Jamal over for breakfast. Without a hint of shame on their face, they both showed up. I sat them both at the table and went to the kitchen to bring food. But that was not why I had called them over. So I placed the photographs that I took of them on the plate, took it out, and served it to them. How does it feel to be served your own betrayal? I said while putting the plates down. They both saw the photograph. My girlfriend started to cry and ran out crying. Meanwhile, for Jamal, I didn't let him go without a good amount of ass-kicking, which he deserved.